what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so since money in the bank is coming up this sunday we have to check out this video what made money in the bank 2011 so iconic by none other than wrestling gifts we gotta check this out man money in the bank 2011 may be one of the best money in the bank pay-per-views of all time arguably one of the best matches of all time between john cena and cm punk one of the best storytelling matches you will ever see and honestly i, I want to say this is the pay-per-view that got me back into wrestling this was right after the infamous cm punk pipe bomb when i saw it on youtube that's when i started getting back into wrestling leading up to money in the bank 2011 dead ass this is the pay-per-view that brought me back and i was like yo this is good sign me up so we gotta check this out because money in the bank is coming up this sunday so this should be interesting i'm looking forward to money in the bank this sunday i will be live streaming y'all so be on the lookout for that because i think this is going to be really cool so let's check this video out appreciate all the love and support let's get into it It's 2011 and the greatest song of all time was released, Friday by Rebecca Black. Black Ops had that. come out the year prior and every kid was having the time of their lives playing on the OG Nuketown map. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the WWE you might ask? Well, let's just say it wasn't the best year. WrestleMania was just boring, one of yeah. the all time greats Edge was forced to retire, yep. Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler had a kiss my foot match, and I love John Cena. Yeah, that was, yeah, there was some cringe in that year of wrestling, for oh, sure. But damn, Cena's character at this point was just downright nauseating. There yep. were some bright spots, though, such as R-Truth becoming the great heel with a little Jimmy stuff. Yeah, that was Christian good. and Randy Orton were having classics, and Daniel Bryan was still grinding. But the thing is, for every one good storyline or angle, we got five boring-ass storylines. Mm -hmm. Towards the end of April 2011, wrestling news sites began reporting that CM Punk may leave the WWE as he had not extended his contract. It basically became widespread news that he might leave. It was no secret that Punk was tired and just didn't want to be in the company anymore. So then in June of 2011, the WWE had a pay-per-view called Capital Punishment. One of the worst pay-per-views of all time. That's all I have to say. And man, what I tell you that this pay-per-view was trash, it was trash. If you ever want to torture someone, don't waterboard them, don't beat them up, just make them watch this pay-per-view. They had a fake Barack Obama. A fake Barack Obama, bro. Like I said, one of the worst pay-per-views of all time. Just, just awful. Obama doing a spinner rooney in the middle of the ring for absolutely no reason. It didn't even look like Obama. They just got like a random black guy, put him in a suit, and just threw him out there. And like, yeah, you're Obama. What the fuck? Okay, it was really, really bad. Trust Definitely. me, don't ever watch this pay per view. Except maybe for one match CM Punk versus Rey Mysterio. They had a great match, as they always did whenever they wrestled. CM Punk won the match, but the main story of it was before the match. So he had a backstage interview, and CM Punk said that after he beats Mysterio, he's gonna do the most honest thing that the WWE Universe has ever seen. Mm. We didn't really get anything on this show, but the seed was planted. Shout out Joey Diaz. Okay, that's the fucking seed. Oh, Jesus. Also, this match took place almost two months since the news broke that Punk may not resign. I was looking back at a live review from the show from the website ProWrestling.net and Jason Powell even said right after the match, quote, No, I don't think this means Punk has signed a new deal. Of course it could be a sign, but the WWE might be keeping him strong so that it means something if someone beats him and sends him out of the company. Mm -hmm. So as they were slowly building out Punk in May and June, everyone just assumed it was because if he did decide to leave, whoever beat him in his last match just got more out of it. Mm -hmm. The next night on Raw, CM Punk was sitting in the middle of the ring and he declared himself the number one contender for the wwe championship but he didn't want that match that night or on an episode of raw no instead he wanted it july 17th at the money in the bank pay-per-view in his hometown of chicago illinois he said that he would not leave the ring until he got his match this led to him sitting there for minutes he eventually started making snow yeah, angels and cm punk he 
this is the thing that catapulted his career. Him just saying, screw it. I'm about to say what I want and do what I want. This catapulted his career to new heights. It did. In the middle of the ring. Then the anonymous Raw General Manager. Oh, my God. Who remembers that? The anonymous Raw General. Oh, my God. That was so annoying. Oh, Oh, my goodness, bro. It was so awful hearing that, that little ding, the little notification. Like, I just received an email. Shut up, Michael Cole. That's when Michael Cole was really unbearable on commentary. Oh, my God. Remember that? Would go on to announce that if CM Punk wanted to challenge John Cena at Money in the Bank for the title, he would have to beat Rey Mysterio and Alberto Del Rio in a triple threat match tonight on Raw. That very night, CM Punk, Nexus armband and all, rest in peace Nexus, won mm -hmm. the match and officially became the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Oh man. Rest in peace Nexus. Say they could have been so much better, but they, yeah, they didn't. WWE didn't really book them correctly like they should have. So the match is over, he's the number one contender, he's sitting in the ring and he announces July 17th he's going to beat John Cena at Money in the Bank. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to announce that July 17th is also the night that his contract with the World Wrestling Entertainment comes to an end. So the real life situation was now a part of the storyline, they yep. actually acknowledged that his contract was going to expire. He then goes on to say, once the clock strikes midnight, I'm leaving. And trust me when I tell you, I'm leaving with the WWE Championship. And he just drops the mic. Shit legit just got real. See the thing was, when Punk spoke, people listened. When Punk spoke, everything he said came off as gospel. Because when he spoke, it didn't seem like an angle. It seemed yeah. like the truth. Whether it was when he was doing the Straight Edge Society or Nexus, you mm -hmm. always believed what he was saying wasn't the character talking. It was Phil Brooks talking. You believed it was legit. So when he brought up the contract, it was like, whoa, we already knew that his contract was legit expiring, but now that they brought it up on TV and he was dead serious about leaving, it was interesting, it yep. was exciting, and it was different. Next week on Raw, it started off like any other episode of Raw. We got the horrible, horrible Nickelback theme song playing, we got Michael <laughs> Cole introducing the show, and then some guy named Shawn Michaels came out and plugged his outdoor show, which I don't think anybody watched. And then Nexus came out with CM Punk, and they had a nice back and forth, Shawn Michaels and Punk were talking, which somehow led to the anonymous Raw General Manager making a match for CM Punk, which led to him versus Kane. They did a count out finish, and it was just like, damn, CM Punk's angle is done in the first 20 minutes of the show? That's it? That's it for Punk? After dropping a fire promo last week, dropping the bombshell that he's leaving the company with the belt, he was done after a match with Kane? Well, not exactly. In the main event of the show, R-Truth beat John Cena in a tables match thanks to CM Punk's help. The match was already in the overrun, meaning the show could end at any second as it was past the 11 in the Eastern Time Zone. So after Punk helped R-Truth win, he went to the top of the stage and he took his seat. One of, if not the most legendary promo of all time. I honestly think this promo brought people back to wrestling when they found out what was being said just oh man and then he had a microphone and he said he has a lot of things that he wants to get off his chest before he leaves in three weeks remember how at capital punishment the seed was planted when punk said that he was going to do the most honest thing that you have ever seen in the wwe Fact. well it was time so punk said he doesn't hate Cena or even dislike Cena. He said he actually likes Cena more than a lot of people in the back. Mm -hmm. But I hate this idea that you're the best, Punk said, because you're not the best. I'm the best. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the pipe bomb. Yep. It was a moment when the lines between fiction and reality were blurred to almost unprecedented levels. Levels we had rarely ever seen yep. in the WWE. I get chills just thinking about it. Everything that Punk said in this promo was real and from the heart. Nothing he said was scripted from any mm -hmm. writer. It wasn't anybody else's words. This was all of him. This, this is, is what he wanted to say. This wasn't some writer going up to him with a book saying, please, can you mention these points? No, this is what he wanted to say. And that's yep. what made this so special. 
Punk said that he's proven to everyone he's the best in the ring, on the mic, and even on commentary. Mm -hmm. He said that no matter how many times he proves it, he's not on collector cups, in movies, or late night talk shows. He goes on to say how Vince is a millionaire who should be a billionaire. He said Vince surrounds himself with yes men like John Laurinaitis. Yep. And then he goes on to say probably the most wild line that he could have said. He said that he likes to think that the company is going to be better once Vince is dead. Yep. But it's going to be run by his daughter and her doofus husband. Holy. Like I said, watching this really got me back into wrestling. Because I hadn't watched wrestling, you know, in a while. I had stopped watching it. This was right when... When I was, you know, I want to say I was probably like a sophomore in college, sophomore in college at this time. So I, I really wasn't too much watching wrestling. Sophomore or junior, one of those two, going probably into my junior year. But when I saw this on YouTube, I was like, oh, I got to watch on what's been, what's been happening. This is what got me back. His promo, dead ass, dead ass. Holy shit. <laughs> Punk then was about to tell a personal story about Vince McMahon uh -huh. when the mic cut out. A short time later, the show went off the air. And he said so much more. It was an iconic moment, and I'm sure if you watched it, I can watch this over and over again yeah. and always just be fascinated. Ladies and gentlemen, it was surreal. It was insane. It was shocking. It was unbelievable. CM Punk, for a few minutes, just dropped bombs, facts, the truth, whatever you want to call it. And just like his promo from the week before, you knew he was serious. You knew that he believed in what he was saying. Facts. This was a promo that left fans wondering what was real and what was a part of the story. It was just crazy. We really had no idea. Was he going to stay in the WWE or was he going to quit? In the promo, he even mentioned that he's going to win that belt and go defend it at Ring of Honor or yep. New Japan Wrestling. He broke the fourth wall. He started talking about Cole Cabana. He, he just went crazy. This was unheard of at the time. No one... Like, WWE didn't really like to mention other promotions. So, he's talking about other promotions, other wrestlers that used to be there. This gave it such authenticity because it was like, yo, he's literally saying what's on his mind. This is not coming from Vince or any writer, any script director, whatever you want to call him in the back, giving pointers. This is how he felt, and it made it so much more better. He just turned up to some unbelievable levels during that promo. See, the thing is, the reason this whole angle worked, it was because it was CM Punk. Yep. All right, take it like this. If any other wrestler said that he was going to leave the WWE, especially in 2011, people would be like, yeah, sure, whatever. But the thing is, it's CM Punk. This isn't someone who's all about the money. This is a man who just loved wrestling. He himself said that he would go defend the title at Ring of Honor or Japan. So he's a wrestler first, not a WWE superstar. So him leaving wasn't some crazy thing that you know people mm -hmm. didn't believe. So nobody knew what was happening. Nobody knew what was happening next. Was he staying? Was he leaving? And the pipe bomb was just so big that ESPN was talking yep. about it. I remember this. ESPN started covering this because at this point WWE they was they were kind of losing steam. Like people weren't as invested. But when this happened, people was like, oh okay, oh some whoa what is what's going on here? And this was before the WWE had any contract with ESPN. Yep. News outlets, random sites online that had nothing to do with wrestling. Yep. It was everywhere. It was a moment that transcended wrestling. A moment where nobody will forget where they were when this happened. And the best part was, it was just out of the blue. It came at a time when the company was at its most PG and the product was yep. so still. This was in the prime PG era. And this man said the company would be better when Vince was dead. What the hell? CM Punk became a cult hero that night, a legend, the voice of the people, a true moment in wrestling history. Yeah, this is this is a moment that will forever be remembered in wrestling history for all time. No doubt about it. Liking this video so far, man. So the next week on Raw, they did an angle where CM Punk was suspended for what he said and he was mm -hmm. out of the match at Money in the Bank. It was perfect. Punk lit the world on fire, and now you take him away for a week. Don't put him on television. Yep. Leave the people wanting more. So that night, John Cena confronted Vince McMahon. And he was basically begging Vince McMahon to reinstate CM Punk and allow him to participate in their scheduled WWE Championship match at Money in the Bank. And Vince actually put over Punk, and he said to John that he thinks Punk will actually beat Cena, and he can't allow that to happen. 
and Cena was killing it as well. Say what you want about Cena, but when he's in serious promo mode, he's an all time great. And eventually Cena walks out on Vince and he gives the title to Vince and he just walks away. Vince runs up to him and says, you know what, you got your match. But if Cena loses, he's fired. So the stakes got even higher. Mm -hmm. On the next week of Raw, CM Punk is back. He's sitting in the middle of the ring with a megaphone. And he simply says one of the most fitting lines. And this is crazy because this is when I started watching it weekly. I started watching Monday Night Raw weekly at this point because I wanted to know what was going to happen with the CM Punk angle, bro. In wrestling history, do I have everybody's attention, attention now? now yep. CM Punk had the wrestling world in the palm of his hands. And then he goes on to say that tonight he wants the first ever live contract negotiation in the ring with Vince McMahon. Maybe I'll sign, maybe I won't, he said. He goes on and on and then Cena eventually comes out to confront him. So Cena and Punk go back and forth, it's intense, it's serious, yep. it's authentic, and it's cool because there's no BS storyline here. It's just legit two people who want to prove that they're the best in the world. And you can tell Punk means what he says, and you also know that Cena means everything that he says as well. Mm -hmm. They just go back and forth just having an amazing promo, and then Cena simply ends it with, I don't care if you have a mic or a megaphone, I don't care if you stay or if you go, I'm coming to Chicago to kick your ass. He drops the mic and he leaves. To close the show, Vince is in the ring. There's a this segment, too, with Vince McMahon was so great as well. Oh, my God. This is so... This is when Monday Night Raw had the better storyline in WWE. The main storyline. This storyline carried Monday Night Raw. A lot of people didn't really care what was going on outside of this storyline because this single-handedly was the thing that people wanted to check out table and he has a contract and it's time for him and CM Punk to negotiate a contract before money in the bank. Both men argue about what Punk wants and Punk says he wants the main event at Wrestlemania, he wants his ice cream and he said most importantly that he wants Vince to apologize for everything that he's ever done. Punk mm -hmm. brought up the anti-bullying campaign and he said that Vince is one of the biggest bullies he's ever met in his life and he wants him to apologize. He wants Vince to apologize for firing his friends for no reason. He keeps saying that he wants him to apologize, but you guys know Vince, he won't. But he did, Vince actually apologizes. And he says, I apologize you son of a bitch. Oh, man, love CM it. Punk had the WWE in the palm yep. of his hands. Not just the fans, but the boss. The craziest part about this was, how much was this real? How mm -hmm. much was fabricated? And how much of this does CM Punk actually want and what did he really mean? You yep. know CM Punk was serious about his friends being fired. He knew he was serious about the main event of WrestleMania. And that's what made this so special because you knew that 90% of the things that Punk was saying, he meant it. Mm -hmm. Sure, they probably added some fabricated stuff in there, but overall it was still authentic. But then Cena's music plays and it's time for the final stare down before the match. Cena's all business and he starts talking, he's like, I hate Vince too, but I still show up to work, but not for that man, not for Vince, but for the people. And then Cena calls Punk the hypocrite. He says Punk will ask the people if they want to see an apology, and then he will ask them to be the voice of the voiceless, but then he's gonna leave them. Cena absolutely kills it. And then Punk kills it too because Punk's like, you're not the underdog that you portray yourself to be. You're not. You are what you hate. You're the 10 time champion. You're the man, John Cena. You're the dynasty. I'm the underdog. You're the Yankees. They both just brought their A game. And the final words we get to close off Raw before the pay per view are by CM Punk. And they were just perfect. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of you. Ladies and gentlemen of the WWE Universe, Sunday night, say goodbye to the WWE title, say goodbye to John Cena, and say goodbye to CM Punk. Mic drop. That's it. That's how you build a pay-per-view. So but hyped. what else is so special so about hyped. this is this angle brought back a lot of people to the WWE. This, he is spot on. This angle brought me back to wrestling. If it was not for CM Punk dropping this, pot, this, this pipe bomb, I don't know when I would have came back to wrestling. I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm being dead ass. CM Punk brought me back to wrestling. His pipe bomb, these promos, these segments brought me back to want to check out wrestling again. Dead ass, bro. Dead ass. Comment down below if CM Punk was one of the reasons why you got back into wrestling again. Let me know. We, a lot of people themselves admit, like, hey, I didn't watch a lot of wrestling, I kind of faded away, but this angle brought me back. 
This truly was just a special time to be a wrestling fan. Facts, bro. It's Sunday, July 17, 2011, the day of the pay-per-view, the day of Cena vs. Punk for the WWE Championship, CM Punk's last day in the WWE unless he signs a contract, and at 8pm Eastern when the show started, CM Punk had yet to sign a contract mm -hmm. extension. So when the clock struck midnight, he would be a free agent. Yes, this actually happened. Yep. The anticipation for this pay-per-view was insane. Yes, they took it was. something real, made it part of the storyline, and people just loved it. It made for intriguing pay-per-view and TV. I would love to go over the entire pay-per-view, but this video was already mad long, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to stick to the main event, but please go out of your way to watch this. It definitely is one of the greatest pay-per-views that the company has ever produced. Yeah, it was a real good pay-per-view. CM Punk versus John Cena. When CM Punk walked into the building that evening, like I said, he had Ooh. still yet to sign any contract extension. Punk's contract actually ended two days prior, so to even wrestle at this show, he agreed to a two-day contract mm -hmm. extension just to true. make the pay-per-view. This is true. Nothing was leaked. Nobody knew what was going on. As the pay-per-view started, nobody still knew. I, I, I think some people didn't know. I believe the announcers at the time, they didn't know the actual ending of the match. I could be wrong, but I believe not many people knew the actual ending of the match. It was only a handful of people knew the actual ending of the match so what was going on nobody knew if he was staying or was he leaving what was going to be the ending nobody at home nobody in the crowd or even backstage yeah this was a once in a lifetime type no one thing. knew so as the pay-per-view started there was still no Not official many people knew. finish to the match that's my old bill and that's what makes this so much greater because not many people knew the real like who was going to win this match Well, let's talk about the match. When CM Punk came out, oh ladies and God. gentlemen, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. After this video, I'm going to go watch that match probably. <laughs> the crowd. This is one of the most intense crowds in WWE history. It was, n it was all CM Punk, bro. All CM Punk, bro. For like 30 seconds before his music even hit, the fans were just chanting CM Punk, CM Punk. Uh -huh. And once his music hit, it was deafening. It was like if Michael Jordan just hit a I game. I wish he could have shown the, like, the, the actual footage, but I'm sure probably WWE would trip out. Wanted to win the NBA title, but even then, I don't think it would compare. It was as loud as any wrestling crowd ever. Yep. CM Punk comes out in the iconic white best in the world well, shirt, yep. just looking like the biggest boss ever. He's just soaking it in. There's no commentary for the first 20 seconds. Yep. The theme is blasting. The fans are going absolutely mental. They're singing along to the song. CM Punk chants break out while yep. the song's still playing. They're so loud that they're overshadowing the song. Just inject this shit into my veins, man. It was it was just crazy. I'm getting and then it gets even it. better. The music stops and he's sitting in the ring like he's a god and people are just worshiping him louder yeah, bro. than all you hear is CM Punk. CM Punk. You have have some people in the rafters. If Cena wins, we riot, which I legitimately thought they were gonna do if Cena actually won that match. Oh my god. And here's the thing, they were like that the entire pay-per-view. Every time a match was done, all you heard was CM Punk, CM Punk. All right, we back. Camera died. It in. Truly, just something special. The stars were just aligned for this man. The fact that it was in Chicago, his contract was expiring, no news was leaking, and he was versing John Cena, his perfect antithesis. It was perfect. And then Cena's music hits. And you guys thought that the pop that Punk got was insane? Well, the boos that Cena got were harder than anybody in wrestling history. Yup. It was, what the fuck? It was like, think of the ECW One Night Stand mm -hmm. crowd on crack booing yep. Cena. This was like some soccer ultra level stuff. The song literally played for 0.5 seconds and the boos were already drowning out the music. I got chills just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And the best part is, when Cena's walking to the ring, there is no salute, there's no pandering to the crowd, nope. he just means business. He's in the ring, he puts his belt in the air, and he's just looking down, no smiling, all business. CM Punk versus John Cena, career on the line, belt on the line. If Punk wins, he leaves with the title. 
Nobody knew if the contract had been signed, nobody knew what was happening, the storyline was perfect, the real life situation was perfect, the crowd was perfect, mm -hmm. and man, this match was perfect. These two were perfect for each other, they are total opposites, and then they went at it for 33 minutes putting on a classic. One of the biggest matches in the history of the WWE as we described by Michael Cole. There were no weapons, there was no crazy spots to be honest, they just let the story do the talking and they just wrestled. It was just different. Look, yep. most of the time you can predict the WWE. Most of the time there are rumors, there's news, and you can kind of figure out what was going to happen. Here, nobody knew what was going to happen and you don't get that feeling often in professional yep. wrestling. It was crazy just back and forth and the longer it went the more intense it got the more hype it got the more everyone was just like what is gonna happen was running through our minds and 25 minutes into the match the crowd was still as hot as it was in the beginning and both men were working they were trying their best both men were just putting in work there was a moment where punk was caught in the stf and everyone's like all right that's it time for punk to tap but no he didn't Punk hit a crossbody, but Cena caught him in midair, mm -hmm. goes for the AA, but well, Punk counters, he then goes for the GTS, Cena even avoids that and puts him to the STF, Punk is so close to the ropes, Cena pulls him back and puts him in the STF again, mm -hmm. but CM Punk somehow countered it to an anaconda vice. CM Punk kicked out of two attitude adjustments, the crowd was just shook. 30 minutes in and it's still anybody's game. Such That's a the thing, man. Match. For 33 minutes, they never lost any interest. So Punk hit Cena with the GTS, but it hit his ribs and not his face, which was a great touch because if it hit his face, he would have been knocked out cold, right? Kayfabe. But no, it hit his ribs, so he rolled out. And then here comes Vince McMahon with John Laurinaitis. And at this point, everyone's just like, oh man, no, don't do it. Please don't do the yeah. screw job finish. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Don't screw it. Everybody was thinking the Montreal screw job. That's all people thought. That's all people was thinking. Oh no, not the Montreal screw job again. It's over. So Cena goes back into the ring and he puts Punk in the STF. And the devil Vince McMahon tries to do the screw job finish by signaling the timekeeper to ring the bell. But no, Cena comes outside and runs up on Vince. He punches Laurinaitis on the way there and he goes to Vince and he says, Not this way. Cena runs back in the ring. Yep. Punk with the GTS. Yep. And Super Cena. One, One two, three. three. CM Punk pinned Super Cena clean in the middle of the ring. And Vince McMahon just looks like he died on the inside. Yep. And the crowd is going insane like they had just won the World Cup or the Super Bowl or yeah. whatever sporting event ever. One of the loudest winning pops you will ever Facts, hear in the bro. history of wrestling. The impossible happened. Vince is shook. Punk is smiling. He's grinning. He has the title in his hands. And everyone is just like, what the hell? Punk actually won. And yep. in the commentary, all you hear in one hour and 14 minutes, CM Punk is no longer an employee of the WWE. Oh my God, so good. This was so good. It was one of those moments where time stood still. Vince gets the mic and he starts saying, stop the music, mm -hmm. get Alberto out here. Yep. Earlier on in the show, Alberto Del Rio won the money in the bank. So the whole idea was, well, time for Alberto to cash in and make yep. him the champion. And at this point, all the fans are just like, oh man, they got us. They bamboozled us. Mm -hmm. They got us with the pop. They got us with a shock. But now Alberto will win and screw our dreams mm -hmm. up. This is true. And hearts slowly began breaking apart at this moment. Alberto's running to the ring. It all made sense. Alberto comes out and CM Punk kicks him in the face and boom. CM Punk grabs the title and runs out of the ring. Yep. He goes onto the barricade. He's smiling at Vince. Blows him a kiss. Legendary. And the fans are going insane. Everyone's jumping. And Punk just runs through the crowd. And that's how the show closes. CM Punk walking through his hometown crowd yep. with the WWE Championship oh, such when a... one hour and 14 minutes or so was going to become a free agent who was also the WWE Champion. 
What a scene. What a moment. Vince looks like he's about to kill himself. This is so good. What great. a match. This what is a so good, line. man. Probably the greatest ending to a pay-per-view oh of all time. Oh, my God. So good. So, how did this happen? Well, during the show... Yeah, during the show, CM Punk signed a contract behind closed doors and nobody knew it never got leaked. Mm -hmm. And they went out there and put on a masterpiece. They tore the house down and ended the show in such a beautiful, beautiful way. What a moment. What a storyline. It was something that I don't think can ever happen again. And yeah. it won't. It was real. It was authentic. The stars were aligned. Well, that's what made Money in the Bank 2011 so iconic. You had to have been watching this live week in week out to truly understand how special this was. But I tried my best to explain it. So go watch the full pay per view. Watch Which all the I'm, promos I'm gonna that go are watch in the this description. Match after watch this the video. punk documentary on this as well. Also, the reason I didn't do a video on the summer of punk in 2011, well, all the storytelling that they executed so perfectly up until here. Let's just say uh, they kind of ruined it after. Yeah, uh, they because, did. Because um, all I really got to say is somehow Kevin Nash was involved in this storyline. Yeah, that, that was... <laughs> Don't worry. A future video is coming soon. Yeah, the Summer of Punk should have been so much better. They ruined that. They ruined it. They they really did ruin it. Uh, but outside of that, man, this just brought back so many good memories. One of, if not, the best Money in the Bank pay-per-view of all time man so i am definitely after i finish editing this video i am going to go watch that match again because it's just one of those matches you can go back and watch again and enjoy like you did the very first time so comment down below let me know did this match potentially get you back into wrestling like it did for me this match brought my love for wrestling back again well this not this match. Let me say, did CM Punk dropping that legendary pipe bomb, this epic storytelling between him and John Cena, did it get you back into wrestling? Well, into WWE wrestling like it did for me? Because it definitely did. This was the spark that I needed to see in wrestling. Because at the time, it had got pretty stale to me. So, comment down below. Let me know. I would love your thoughts and opinions on this. We'll be live streaming Money in a Bank this Sunday. So make sure you guys are there to watch. We're going to enjoy watching Money in the Bank this year. But appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 50K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.